Hey, I'm Jared, and this is how you make a complex material inside UE5 to use on your character projects. In this video, we're going to run through creating a super useful master material inside Unreal Engine 5. We're going to make a material that's going to give us some complex functionality like multiple tiling detail normals, anisotropic shading, a function for iridescence, as well as being able to tint our emissive. We're going to give this material parameter controls to give us a little bit more control inside the engine to give us some cool results like this. Once we have our master material set up, we'll be able to create instances off of this and reuse this in any future projects for any number of different things. For those of you who don't have the time to watch this whole video but are still curious about the shader, I'm actually going to go ahead and throw it up on my ArtStation store for free to check out, so if you're interested, you can find a link below to the shader. I do plan to update the shader over time with future projects, but for those interested in the resources, that'll be there along with a couple of other items if you're interested. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump over to UE5 and get started creating our material. Okay, so here we are inside UE5. This project, I actually went ahead and made this for ArtStation Learn. Um, so if you're curious to see some of the process of some of the things I did to make this character, you can actually check that out over there. I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started creating our first initial master material. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna find a location where we're gonna put our master materials. I have a folder uh, associated with any of the master materials that I end up creating. Let's go ahead and right click in the empty tray. Uh, I'm gonna come up here to material and I'm gonna name this hero assets underscore M. Once we have our master material created, let's go ahead and double click on it to open up the actual material. So to get things started, we're going to start off a little bit slow. I'm just going to go ahead and create a couple of first initial um, parameters for the material. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a constant node and we'll click on this and we're going to come over here. And first thing we're going to want to do is set this to 0.4. Um, once we have that set, we're going to come back over to the parameter and we're going to right click on it and we're going to hit convert to parameter. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a name. I'm going to call it spec value, hit enter. And now we have a parameter control that's going to show up inside of our instance. So I'll drag this and connect it to our specular channel. The next thing that I'm going to want to start creating is I'm going to map out the metallic, the roughness and the ambient occlusion. So let's go ahead and right click in our scene and we're going to search for texture sample. And this is going to bring up the node where we're going to put in a texture map. So if we come down here, um, if you've already imported all of your textures, you can associate them with this or you could just use a temp texture. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to right click on this one and we're going to convert this to a parameter the same way that we did with our constant value. So let's go ahead and name this AO slash rough slash metal. And the reason I name it this way is because the AO is going to correspond to our red channel, the roughness is going to correspond to our green channel, and the metalness is going to correspond to our blue channel. Let's go ahead and pipe in a couple of these channels. The first one we're going to pipe in is going to be our ambient occlusion. Next, we're going to put in the metallic. And last, we're going to leave roughness because we're actually going to add in a couple more parameter values so that we can control this value down the line. The first thing that we're going to want to do is we're actually going to want to add a clamp to our chain. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it two constant values that we're going to pipe into this clamp. So let's go ahead and create a constant copy it and this first one or we'll convert both of these to parameters and this one we're going to name rough min and this one we will name rough max so for our rough max we're going to go ahead and set the value to one and our rough min, we're gonna leave at a value of zero. zero. 
So I'll come and pipe this here and hook this up here. And now we're gonna take the green channel and we're gonna connect it to this slot. And then we will put this into our roughness. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to tackle is gonna be the anisotropic reflections. Um, I really wanted to mirror the effect that I was getting inside of Marmoset. So similar to this last part, I'm going to use some a channel pack texture, but the biggest difference is going to be this texture is actually going to determine where the uh, anisotropic reflections are happening and where they aren't. So to get started with this area, the first thing that we're going to want to add is we're going to throw in a couple more constants. So let's add one and we're gonna duplicate this uh, two times. So we're gonna have three constants. This first one, we're gonna leave at just a value of zero. These next two, we will convert to a parameter. Let's go ahead and name this one anisotropy control. And we're going to leave this parameter at a value of zero. This next one, uh, let's call this an ISO intensity. And we're going to give this a value of four. Okay, so now that we have that, the next thing we're going to add in our chain is going to be alert. And we'll go ahead and pipe in zero to A our control into B and our intensity into the alpha. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a switch and this is gonna allow us to turn this on or off inside of the material. So we don't have to use these reflections if we don't want to, we don't have to author a map, but this will at least give us the control to turn that on or off when we choose to. So let's right click and we'll search for switch parameter. And we're gonna name this to anisotropy reflections. Okay, and so here what we're gonna do is we're gonna pipe in this mixed value because this is giving us a control to turn it on um, and the intensity of it. So we'll pipe this into true, but if we decide not to have the anisotropic reflections happening, then it'll give us a value of false. So now what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna add in a mask to tell us if this reflection is on, um, these are the areas that it's gonna affect. So to do that, we're gonna just come here, we're gonna copy this texture parameter um, and I'm going to rename it to material mask. Okay, and so then the next thing that we're gonna do, um, I'm gonna go ahead and change this just so that I can visualize it a little bit better. I'm gonna set it to a mask um, that I have inside the engine just so I can see what's going on. And we're gonna have a alert. Here. And then um, for my material mask, I use the red channel to drive this. Uh, so we're gonna plug this into the alpha. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna drag this into B. And now we are gonna come over here and we're gonna put this into anisotropy. So now that's the first half of the equation of setting up our reflections. The next part is just going to be able to give me a little bit more control over the direction of the reflections and how they face, as well as introducing the option to add in a flow mask if I choose to. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and add is a texture um, object parameter. And we're gonna leave this, we don't need to name it, um, but we'll come over here and let's search tangent tangent color map, and we'll add that in there. The next thing we're gonna do is create a constant. We will convert this to a parameter. 
and let's name this an ISO map control. We'll leave that at a value of zero. And the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to make is a constant three vector and convert this to a parameter. And we're gonna name this an ISO world position. Next, we'll add in a world aligned normals. Okay, and now that we have this, let's go ahead and plug in our texture object. And we're gonna put our control into texture size. And last, we are gonna take our world position and put this into world position. We're gonna create another switch that's gonna allow us to turn this on or off if we choose. Let's take our XYZ texture, plug that into true, and we're gonna go ahead and copy this constant three. We'll rename it to an ISO manual tangent. So this will allow us to change the tangent um, reflections however we choose. So let's go ahead and set this to red value one. We'll hit okay. Come here and plug this into our false. And lastly, let's just name our parameter. Use an ISO map. So this control will allow us to plug in a flow map as well as uh, give us some manual control over the tangent. So we'll plug that into our tangent. And now we have control of the reflections, um, our anisotropic, our roughness and specular. And the next thing that we're gonna get started with is gonna be our detail normals. The first thing that we're gonna do is just add in a texture sample. And we're gonna wanna convert this to a parameter. So for this one, we're just gonna go ahead and name it norm. This is gonna be our first initial normal channel. Um, we will come here, change this to a normal. And once we have that in place, we're gonna start adding in a couple of nodes and this is gonna be our normals for um, the, the texture sample slot that we're gonna put our detail normals in. So we'll just duplicate this, rename it, detail normal. And then we will add a texture coordinate as well as a constant that we're gonna turn into a parameter. So we'll convert to parameter and let's name this detail normal tile R. So we'll hit enter and then we're gonna add a multiply and pipe in our texture coordinates to A and put our tiling into B. Once we have that, we'll come over here, put this into our UV slot. And now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're going to combine these two normals. So this will be our normal, uh, our detail normal, and this will just be our base normal. So let's add a flatten normal. And we're gonna copy this, put it over here, and we're gonna just rename this real quick. So NRM for normal red intensity. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and plug this part into our flatness and we're gonna plug in the RGB into the normal. So now the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna want, allow, want to allow ourselves to um, blend the two together so to do that we're going to add a blend angle uh, angle corrected normals and we will put this flatten normals into the additional normals and our base normals into the base normal slot so once we have that now we're going to also add in a switch just so that we can turn this off whenever we want to uh, static switch parameter and we'll put our result into the true 
So if this is checked, this is gonna allow us to have the detail normal. If not, it's just gonna revert back to our base normal. Okay, so now that we have that, we're gonna go ahead and just take this chunk of our graph and we're gonna copy it a couple of times. So this one is gonna be our blue channel, this one's gonna be our green channel, and this one's gonna be our alpha channel. So this is gonna allow us to have a channel packed map that drives four separate detail normals. Okay, so now I have all four of these. Uh, we just wanna go through and make sure that the naming corresponds to the next channel. Okay, so now we have all four of our detail normal slots uh, named and assembled. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is make sure to add in a mask so that we can mask out where the detail normals are applied and where they're not. So to do that, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna come back up to our initial one. And so this is gonna be kind of like a daisy chain. We're, we're gonna start with one, adding it to the next channel, adding it to the next channel, and adding it to the next channel. So um, the first thing that we're gonna wanna add to do this is we're gonna come here and add a linear interpolate. Okay. Then we're gonna go ahead and take our detail normal R and pipe that into our B channel and take our initial base normal and put it into our A channel. So once we have this, um, now we just need to pipe in the alpha, which is going to be our detail mask that is going to drive where this effect is applied and where it isn't. So just to make our lives a little bit easier, let's come here. We're just going to copy a texture sample node and we'll rename it. Detail mask. Okay. And then we're going to come down here and just switch this to a mask so there you can pick whatever it doesn't really matter um, okay so now I have this and so this is for our red channel so red we're gonna go ahead and pipe in the mask slot for our red channel into this alpha and so now that we have that like I said we're gonna start to chain all of these together so let's go ahead and copy this and we're gonna move down the chain we'll bring this slot into our a channel and our blue detail normals are gonna go into B. So now we will take our LERP and plug it into our normal. And there we go, we have our detail normals all set up. Okay, so to get started with the albedo, let's go ahead and copy just any texture sample node and we'll name this to albedo. And the first thing that we're going to set up is going to be the iridescence. Um, so to do that, the first node we're going to want to add in is going to be a camera vector. And once we have that, we're going to go back over here and we're just going to copy our normal texture parameter. So we'll paste that here. And we do want to make sure that we use this normal texture parameter because this is going to help drive some of this iridescent look. Next in the chain, we're gonna to wanna to add two component masks. So we'll search mask, add a component mask, and we'll copy and paste this so that we have two. Let's move this one down here. This first one, let's make sure that it is set to R and G. This one, we're gonna to wanna to set to G and B. So we'll turn off red and turn on B. And the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to add is alert. and let's go ahead and copy this and paste a second version move this here and now let's add in a couple of constants this for both of these let's convert them to a parameter this first one we're going to name iridescent tile G and this next one we will name iridescent tile R. And for this, 
iridescent tile R, let's set our default value to four. For our G, let's also set that to four. And we will go ahead and take our G right here, pipe it into the B. We will take our camera vector, put it into our mask right here and take our mask and we're gonna put this into the A channel. We'll put this iridescent tile in G into the alpha and then let's take this red and put it into our mask up here and put this into the A slot and this into the B slot. And for, uh, oops, I actually did that incorrect. Let's do this and this. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna add two tile sample or texture sample nodes. So we will create one, let's copy it, add a second. And for these, I actually went ahead and made a custom uh, texture. The texture for it, it's just gonna be a rainbow pattern. So I made two separate ones. So spectrum, and we will do the this one, um, oops, this one here, and this one we're gonna come down and search spectrum. Top, and then let's pipe in this into our UV and this into our UV. Once we have these two, let's add another linear interpolate. We will put this one into our A channel and this one into our B channel. And the next thing that we're gonna add is going to be another alert. So we'll just copy this and paste it. And let's come over to our albedo. Um, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to change this to something that's not a mask. Um, base color. Uh, it can be just whatever base color you want to throw in there. And then let's take this and put it into our A channel and we will put this into our B channel. And then the last thing that we're going to want to do is add a, another constant so that we can control this. We'll convert this to a parameter and we're gonna name this iridescent intensity. And then we will put this into the alpha. So now we have our iridescent set up. Let's go ahead and add a switch just so that we can turn this on or off whenever we choose. So just for the sake of ease, let's grab this one, copy it and paste it up here. We will put in our true channel right here and if false we will use just our basic albedo map okay let's make sure that we name this what it needs to be iridescence okay so now we have our iridescent set up and the next part that we're going to want to set up is going to be the fuzz the first thing we're going to want to do is copy this camera vector and let's add in a pixel normal right here and let's add in a dot next we're going to pipe this into our a and this into our b and then up here we will do one minus one minus and then over here we're going to do a power we will put this here and this into this. And then let's just copy this because we're gonna make a couple more uh, constant controls. So let's name this one fuzz highlight intensity. Okay, and we're gonna set the value for this to 15 and we'll put this in to this slot. And then let's copy this power and put it up here. We'll put this one into that. And then next we're gonna add a multiply right here. And we will put in this into there. And then let's copy this constant two more times. We'll put one here. This one we're gonna name 
was highlight spread. So this is going to control the spread of the highlight. Was highlight spread. And we'll put that into the B channel. And for the value on this one, we're going to set this to just one. And we will come up here and put this one in here. Set this value to four. Actually, let's set this to six. We're gonna set this, call this edge intensity. Okay. And now that we have that in place, we're gonna add a, another multiply up here, putting this into the A slot. And we'll copy our constant, paste it here, throw it into our B. And we're going to name this fuzz edge spread. We're going to set this value to four. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and throw in an add. So once we have this, we'll put this top one into A and this bottom one into B. Move this right here. And the next thing that we're going to want to do is add a blend screen. Blend screen, put this in line this here. I'm going to go ahead and copy this albedo and just paste it here so that it's a little bit closer to this chain for visualization. I'll put this into base and add in a linear interpolate. Let's plug in our blend screen to B and we'll put our albedo into A and then we're going to create a constant and we're going to call this fuzz intensity fuzz intensity and we're going to set the value to four and then we will put this in our alpha and the last thing that we want to do is we want to add in a switch so static uh, switch parameter we will put in this into true, and if false, we will get our just basic texture. So let's go ahead and change the name on this. We're just gonna name it to fuzz. All right, so now that we have this all set up, this is gonna control our fuzz. And the next thing that we wanna do is we just want to use a mask, same way that we have with you know these material masks and the detail normal mask giving us the ability to drive where this fuzz effect happens and where it doesn't. So to do that, the next thing in the chain we're going to want to add is a linear in Tripoli. So we'll add it up here and we'll copy this and paste it down here as well. So the next thing that we're going to do is I use one of the channels on my material mask to drive fuzz. So just same way I did with the albedo. I'm gonna just put one right here so that I can see it a little bit easier. For my mask, I'm going to plug in the red channel into the alpha. And next, I will put this into the B slot and come back up here to the albedo. And I'm gonna put that into the A slot. And then, so that's gonna have our iridescence set up. I'll put that there. And then we're gonna put the B channel into this alpha and next we'll throw our fuzz into the B slot and our albedo into the A slot. Okay so now those are both set up and good to go. Last we just want to put a linear interpolate so that we can put these two together. Do that and then we will pipe in our base color. And now we have a pretty good functioning master material. The last thing that we're going to want to set up is going to be our emissive material. So to do that, I do want to have a little bit of control. I'm going to use a mask the same way that I did up here to drive where the emissive happens and where it doesn't. I'm also going to give myself a color control using a constant three so that I can tint the emissive inside the engine with whatever color I want, as well as giving me some control over the intensity and how bright the effect is. So to do that, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is 
come over here and just grab our material mask. Let's paste it here and we'll create a constant. Let's convert this one and we're gonna name this emissive control. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a switch. Static switch. And let's name this emissive. So we are gonna put our control into false. So if this is false, this control is gonna tell us the amount. If it's true, then we are gonna use the green channel from our mask. And next, we want to add in a linear triple eight. And we're gonna plug in our emissive right here into the alpha and the A channel. So once we have those set up, we're gonna just copy this emissive control, post it here, and let's name this to a emissive strength. For this, I'm gonna actually set the default value to one, and then we will put this in our B channel. So one last step that we wanna do is create the constant three vector so that we can tint this. We'll put in another alert and pipe this here to A and this to B. Oops, actually this is gonna go to alpha and we're gonna add a constant three vector and we will put this into B. And the one thing we do wanna make sure that we do is convert this to a parameter and we'll just name this emissive color. And just like that, we're good to go. This is how I set up the entire material. So it has controls for a lot of these different functionalities. It gives us the ability to turn things on and off. Overall, I hope this works for you guys. So the next thing is just wanna make sure to hit save so that it compiles the shader. Okay, so now that that's done, we can close that and we can come right here and this is one of the cool things about creating this master material. Now, if we right click on it, we can create a material instance. So once we click on that, we'll just name it uh, test, test material, and then we can open it up. And here is what our instance is gonna look like. So it's gonna have all of the different controls that we can turn on. So once we created a parameter, it gave us the ability to click these checkboxes and turn it on. Say we wanna use uh, a detail normal in the A channel, the B channel, the green channel, or the red channel, we just turn it on or off. And you'll notice that it propagated up here for some of the other controls. So this red normal intensity wasn't there, but as soon as I click this and turn it on, it gives us access to that control. So the last thing I wanted to go ahead and show is if you wanna keep things a little bit more organized, you can put things in a group. So inside your material instance, that'll make things a little bit more legible um, and easier to find. So for example, if you wanted to come here and make sure that all of these detail normal slots all show up in the same area, you can come over here to the group and you can just name this normals and hit enter. That should now be visible. So here is a little bracket and all of the things that are underneath that group description of normal are gonna propagate in this area. So that's how I made this master material that I was able to use for my latest project. Hopefully you guys found some of this stuff useful. Like I mentioned earlier, if you guys wanna check out this material, you can find it in my ArtStation store, which the link will be below, along with some of the other content that I've made in the past. If you have any suggestions on how to improve it, go ahead and let me know. Um, also, if you guys have any suggestions for other videos or things that you'd be interested in learning, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.